being prepared for the shops. Every day this factory receives raw seafood like this from all over India. They are processed, packed and then exported across the world. The last couple of years have been a busy time here. It's become a 24-hour operation to get the orders out on time. And this company is not an exception. The situation's the same across the industry. Demand for Indian seafood, especially shrimps like these, has never been so high. Now, this company used to ship nearly 40 tons of products every week, but now it's nearly 60 tons. And traditionally, these were exported to Japan and China. But now, over the last few years, Europe and United States have become big markets. In fact, the government is so upbeat about seafood exports that it expects them to more than double and touch 10 billion US dollars by 2020. Farmers uh, growing the shrimp in their ponds, in their farms. That's where we have seen a huge increase in production and subsequent exports. The depreciation of the rupee helped uh, along with the shortage of shrimp worldwide, so the price of shrimp skyrocketed. So both of those factors played a very important role in terms of our uh, net uh, in increase in exports. The falling value of the rupee means that things from India are cheaper for foreign buyers. So that's not only helped the seafood industry, but exports across the board. As a result, the government predicts exports will be up 6% this year. That will help narrow the gap between export revenues and what India pays for imports, the current account deficit. In the last financial year, India's current account deficit was one of the highest in the world at 88 billion US dollars, driven by high gold and oil imports. The government then took steps to curb demand for the yellow metal to tackle the issue. And with those restrictions and higher exports, it's confident of keeping it at 45 billion US dollars in this financial year. But experts say more needs to be done to keep it under check. I think if you allow the export sector to flourish more, then you would have a more convincing solution, a more long-term solution to the current account deficit problem. Otherwise, just curbing gold imports could give you short-term uh, relief, but not really a long-term one. India's other big economic quandary has been how to table its fiscal deficit, the gap between government expenditure and revenue. Global credit rating agencies had warned India that it would face a downgrade if it didn't narrow the deficit, making it more expensive to borrow money. But government now says it's on target to do better than it hoped. There has been criticism of how it's managed to do that. For example, deferring payment for oil subsidies until next year. But many have defended the action. Governments had to rely on, which is not optimal, is uh, cut a lot of plan expenditures towards the end of the year. You know, this may not be the best mix of achieving a fiscal consolidation, but given the imperative to stick to your fiscal deficit, given the pressure from ratings agencies, from pressure on emerging markets around the world, I think the government had little choice. And given their constraints, has done a pretty admirable job. All eyes will now be on the upcoming general elections, which are due in April and May. Whoever forms the next government will deliver a full main budget in July, which will also give a sense about the future course of action for the economy. But regardless of who's in power, addressing these key challenges will remain the top priority.